What's up, y'all? I'm Mariah Elise, and this is Frame. In the next 10 minutes, I'm not going to tell you things you likely already know. The truth is, there's no particular way to approach an abstract piece. Yeah, the key is to engage with it. Yeah, allow it to be vulnerable with you as you allow yourself to be vulnerable with it. But this only helps certain people so far. Some of us really want to understand the piece beyond emotions. But the real truth is, many people look at abstract art and have a lack of understanding because one, they have a hard time connecting to something they can't grasp. And two, they don't understand these three technical things. The three C's are what I like to call them. That's color theory, composition, and content. So so today I'm going to break down a piece with you guys using those three C's. We're going to go over each C individually as we break down this piece. And before we go into the next C, we're going to break down what that C really means and why they even matter. Then I'm going to give you guys a piece to look at yourself and break down yourself, as well as the opportunity to tell me how you broke it down. Before we go ahead and dive into this video, make sure to subscribe and like this video if you find it valuable. And if you're feeling a little spicy, hit that little notification tab and leave a comment. Let's go ahead and get started after I have a little sip of my Tito's because I've been having quite a day. All right, so right to it. So I'm gonna start by breaking down this piece using the three C's like I told you guys a bit earlier. That's color theory, color composition, and content. So you can see the process of how I break down a piece. First, let me say this, don't over criticize abstract art. Allow it to live in the space that it's in and give it the ability to have a conversation with you and with that space. Understanding these C's will be an assistant to helping you know what you're looking at from a technical perspective. In between each C, I'll give a short explanation of what each really means and why they really matter. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this piece is by artist Sam Gilliam, and the name of this piece is Untitled One. It was created in 1970 using the medium of acrylic paint on crumbled paper. It's small in size, sitting at 14 by 20 inches, which translates to 35.6 by 50 0.8 centimeters. Now the first thing we're going to look at this piece is color composition. So composition refers to the arrangements of elements within a work of art. Now since the element that we're focusing on right now is color, we're going to look at the placement of color within this piece and how it's used. Now this matters because it's often a guide in how the artist wants us to view the piece, even if you don't know it. Composition makes for a balanced art piece. And just as it's done with figurative paintings and photographs, it has to be done with color. Now I'm personally a fan of a blend of heavy color and white space, which is why I'm a fan of this piece. Now when I say that, it's easily a mention of color composition and even balance. If we look to the right of this painting, Gilliam chose to use a lot of white space. But if we look at it, the space isn't negative, meaning the space isn't unused space. Even the areas we consider white space has a yellowish greenish tint to it. So the contrast isn't too heavy. And in this image, he's balancing his heavy usage of color with his deep blue. Those are the very first things I see when I look at the composition of the painting. I also notice his use of value, which is the lightness to the darkness of a color. Now, since we're in this space of breaking a piece down, which I don't naturally agree with, but I wonder if he would have left this space completely white without this little hint of blue, the polarities between color and lack of color would have conveyed a different conversation. And also it goes without saying, we can't ignore the texture that comes from the crumbled paper. That is also an additive to the composition. The color wouldn't be placed in certain areas. The color wouldn't move in certain areas. The lightness and the darkness of the color or the value of the color wouldn't sit in certain areas if the paper wasn't crumpled. So we talked about composition. We know that it's the placement of things. And in this aspect, it's the placement of color. It's where we see color. It's where he placed the color and how he placed the color. It's where our eyes are guided. We can see on the left of this painting, it's a heavy usage of color. And on the right of this painting, it's not that much color, but there are emphasis on certain pieces or certain colors on this right side. So next up, let's talk about color theory. So color theory is the collection of rules and guidelines, which are used to communicate through the usage of color schemes. Now, this can be really intense to learn, but simply put, understanding this will give you a basic understanding. It can get a lot more complex, but for the sake of this video and the sake of time, we're gonna get back to the painting in relation to color theory. Now, the first thing that I notice is he's using colors that are right next to one another on the color wheel. Now, theoretically, or in theory, this is called an analogous color scheme. 
Those colors are variations of blues, violets, and reds. Now, with the exception of this little greenish um, blue that you see, or this yellowish green that you see, uh, sit next to this blue is beautiful it sits well next to it in my opinion because of the process of making green which is mixing blues and mixing yellows together however beyond my breakdown this is only what i'm initially seeing but when i'm in conversation with people viewing the same thing they're going to notice different things so i urge that of course we want to get technical but i really want you guys to get out there and have conversations with people and see what they see beyond what you see i'll continue to be a pusher of connecting conversationally with the piece beyond the technicalities Color theory can be really difficult, but again, the things that I really want to notice here is the analogous color scheme. He's using colors that are right next to one another on the color wheel. And that's my very quick takeaway when looking at color theory and looking at this piece. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into content. Now, oftentimes having an immediate knowledge of direct content isn't likely. Most times we can only develop our personal perspectives and lend them to the piece that we're looking at in that moment. But when we begin to gain interest in a particular artist and start to understand their background, their influences, their way of thinking, and we get into the timeline of their career, we are naturally feeding ourselves with what their work is based around. Now don't get caught up in this, but highly consider it. In definition, content in a work of art is what refers to what is being depicted and might be helpful in deriving a basic meaning to that specific piece or the collection. Now, before talking about Sam Gilliam and his content and what I've paid attention to to understand his content, it's important that you press that subscribe button, <laughs> that like button, but it's also important that you see these draped canvases. In my opinion, this is the most relevant in depicting what Gilliam is known to be. Now there's something that Gilliam said in an interview on the Artist Toolbox in 2011. He said, contemporary art won't be appreciated for the art, but it will be appreciated for the process. Heavy. I probably shouldn't take single sentences and expound and transfer that to all of his work, but I think that is something that he really resonates with and something that he truly means. And I have done this because that's content. I have taken it. I have taken that one sentence and transferred it into all of his pieces because that's what content is. Those are his thoughts and they're helpful in understanding a part of the meaning behind his pieces. He takes the canvas off of the stretcher and drapes it, then arranges it with uh, structural arrangements. He says several times, as an artist, we have to interact with the community. And I feel that this is how he's allowing himself to react to the space or to engage with the space by arranging and forming his work to have certain presence in certain spaces. I'm not gonna dive too deep for the sake of time, but when we are trying to understand the content of an artist's work, we begin to dig into who they are and where they're from and their process. It helps us understand beyond our perspectives and allows us to get into theirs. Sometimes this isn't what the artist wants. They may want our personal thoughts to stand alone, or they might want us to understand who they are as an artist fully in order to understand and assist us in understanding their work. When discovering content, it's important to listen to interviews and collect artist books and read articles about them. It's nice to know that Gilliam in 1965 became the first painter to introduce the idea of unsupported canvases, particularly inspired by hanging clotheslines, which he observed from his Washington DC studio. It's also incredibly interesting to know that he went to the Washington Color School where he was taught to take the paintings off of the board and stain and then restretch. But really what made him special and uh, different is he never put them back on the board and restretched them. Now we understand in the sense of where the ideas we know him so well from, where they stem from. You see, it's important to understand who's influencing him in the heights of his career or different portions of his career. Now, directly after he continued draped canvases, artists such as jazz musicians trained and Miles Davis inspired him. We can dig into Gilliam and how being an African-American man has influenced him. We begin to understand content by understanding how the artist thinks, what inspires them, Content essentially is the contextual idea and it helps us understand those ideas, especially, especially in abstract art. Now we know composition is the placement of things and when we're talking about abstract art, composition is the placement of colors and how those colors and their placement is 
God in God's eyes, the next thing to know is color theory. Understanding those colors and what colors go well together or why those colors are interacting with one another. And the very last is con understanding and digging to the background and the thoughts of the artist. Before we go, I want you guys to look at this Sam Gillian piece. What you see in regards to composition, color theory, and how his content is helping shape your understanding. Now we're about to wrap things up, so I hope you guys understood a bit of color composition, color theory, and content. Maybe this was even an introduction to who Sam Gilliam is to some of you guys. Anyways, I'm finishing my Tito's. Let me know if you guys had a drink with me and what you were sipping on. It's not like a little drink while we talk about art. All right, guys, y'all stay up, stay solid. I'll talk to you guys next week. And oh yeah, Check out my video about understanding contemporary art if you like this. You'll be into that. Don't forget, press that subscribe button, that like button, and that little bell if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Alright, peace.